Hey there, comic book fans. I decided to put on my Halloween coat for this video. As I wore it. I wore it for Halloween this year again. This is one I, a coat I painted back in the aughts sometime. And I used to go down to the village Halloween parade in it. And uh, haven't in many years, but there's some flames on the... I have, have the whole zoot suit that goes with it. It's really long. It's got flames down there, too. But I figured I'd just put it on to make this video. Why not? And let's, let's actually, let's see, six comics this week. Four from my poll list, two off the shelf. But let's start out with, I think I forgot to show last week's, last week. Top of the printer, museum comics. We've got a Hulk. What number is this? 163, does that say? This is a Herb Trimpy on Herb Trimpy cover. So, pencils and inks by Herb. Pretty neat one. A little before my time. This was a back issue to me. And this is Optic Nerve number two. Adrian, I think Tomaini is how you say his last name. I've heard, I'm not 100% sure. That's how I've heard it uh, said, though. This is an indie comic from, I think this is from the 90s also. This is from the 90s. from the 70s. This is from the 90s. Wow, the 90s was a long time ago. <laughs> so it was the 70s, but that always seems like a long time ago. So I had those out on the top of my printer looking at them all week. Let's see what else, what's our... Uh, um, uh, Faceless in the, in the Family, a Matt Lisniewski cover. I mean, like comic. This got more issues coming. Ah, issue number two. There's the back. It's uh, Oni Press, eight dollar comic, extra thick one. What is that? Forty eight pages, maybe sixty four. Who knows? I'd have to count them to see. But um, I think I first discovered him on Twitter or something. I like. I didn't know. I s somehow someone must have posted something to his years ago to his Twitter where he would post artwork and. Then I saw he was doing some comics, so I picked up his comics. I think he did a comic with Matt Kint a couple years ago that I got. But he's got this weird sort of a style with lots of lots of little shading in it. and He does strange versions of superheroes. I have no idea what this is about, by the way. What is that, a dragon head in space or something? Well, this one's in black and white, not color. Uh, I don't know if it's, a, like I said, $8 an issue, pretty thick, but I don't know how many issues it is. There's an issue two on the back. I I think I, I, I'm pretty sure I put the, the whole thing, because often I'll order just the first issue of a series to check it out uh, rather than put the whole series on my pull list, but I'm sure I put the whole series on my pull list with it, because, you know, I'd, I'd buy his stuff sort of sight unseen, so, uh, I'll probably have issue two ordered already, but I'll have to double check, and speaking of buying sight unseen, we got Usagi Yojimbo, Ice and Snow, part two of five, always a buy for me, Usagi, nice cover, what's that guy's name, I can't remember, his, let's see if they say it at the beginning, he's the demon character who uh who travels with this little girl too there's the little girl down the bottom it's like a, this demon character who travels with this little girl and is kind of an enemy of usagi's um good stuff always enjoy usagi so i look forward to that issue up oh, then we've got uh garth ennis and jason burrows the ribbon queen issue four of eight this has been uh, a horror police procedural, I guess you could call it, um, where this the t this woman who's a police detective, I think that's her there, and the color one, not the black and white one, and got involved with this case and this sort of this monster. Oh, matter of fact, there's the dead woman over there with her dead woman pallor. Uh, somehow that woman was murdered, came back to life, and now this monster is controlling this woman, and crazy things happen. There's some other stuff by who's this AWA? 
artist writers artisans or something like that i think that stands for but i've enjoyed the enjoyed the first three issues i'm sure i'll enjoy this one good horror story and another police procedural this is no one uh who's doing this one uh Kyle Higgins and Brian Buccioletto are the writers, and the artist is um, Geraldo Borges, colorist Mark uh, Englert, letterer Hassan Atsmain Elhau. There's our, there's our team. This one is a police procedural with a little bit of superhero sort of super villain stuff thrown in. Uh... I'm not sure if the guy's a hero or a villain. He's a villain sort of to the police. And he really hasn't done much. I mean, this is more police procedural than superhero story. But I've enjoyed it. Issue number six. There we go. I don't know if I said the issue number. Uh, but I've enjoyed it. It's been fun. Good stuff. I don't... I Oh, it's part of the massive verse. That's right. See, that up there underneath the image logo says massive verse. That means it's part of the um, uh, Radiant Black uh, Rogue Sun universe that uh, they're making over there at Image. Let's see. Now we've got Scout Comics, A Haunting on Mars, with this EC Comics-like cover. They they use the design. I don't know if this is a... I don't know if this, I don't think this is an exact EC cover. I don't really know. I don't remember one with a guy disintegrated on it. But I was since I only had four comics, I was ch- looking for some other stuff to buy to try out, and this was there. And I flipped through it, even though it's a five dollar comic. I don't really like buying these five dollar. Trying out five dollar comics to me is like ooh. Don't know what it's about besides a haunting on Mars. Uh, <laughs> So who does it? Hold on, let me tell you that. Written and writer and letterer is Zach Chapman. Illustrator is Rory Coleman. Colorist is Steve Cannon. Okay. I don't think I've heard of any of those people, but we'll give uh, A Haunting on Mars a try. Let's see, the last thing we got. This came out last week, I remember seeing it. Eden Wood, Tony Daniel who I know from, you know, he did a lot of mainstream superhero stuff. He only, he did, uh, did he do something with Scott Snyder? In, uh, I think he, I can't remember what it was. Did he do not, was he the Noctara guy? I can't even remember, jeez. But, you know, I know his work from Batman and stuff like that. Even though I don't think I bought any of it, I know it from, the, you know, I know his work. But, um, oh yeah, on the back is a Noctara ad. So, yeah, Tony S. Daniel. He de- he definitely drew Noctara, which I bought. This one he's writing himself. I have no idea what it's about besides a Robin Hood knockoff. I don't know. <laughs> but I saw it last week and didn't pick it up just because I had enough comics last week. I think I had nine comics already last week or ten, so it's like I didn't need another one. Uh, but this week it was uh, still a bunch of them on the shelf, so I was like, you know what? I'll give it a try now. So, uh, up oh, three years later. So whatever the story is, it happens three years later. Uh, so, um, up oh, from the creator of Edenwood. <laughs> uh, so, you know, we'll give it a try. Let me show you a little bit of my artwork besides what I'm wearing. We've got Dreams of Things 210. <coughs> Pardon me. This week, early in the morning voice. Some sort of coat of many colors. Green hair piece popping out. This one's kind of dreamy, I'd say. Ooh, and there you can see the little, in the face, the little spikes of uh, little bits of white gel pen there that's something new i've been working with over these markers i i think i showed those gel pens i got a couple months ago but it's like i i've been using them a bit then forgot about them then pulled them out and used them a bit so i was like it's a good the, the white works nicely over the markers so i think they, and the gel pens are archival too i never knew that about uh gel pens so 
I was happy to read that. So there you go. A little bit of artwork, some comic books, a fancy painted coat, arm with nails in it and eyes up on the fingers. Also, what's this one? A lightning bolt and a swirl. Uh, a man and a woman with giant eyes for heads and flames on the cuffs flames on the bottom purple trim purple and yellow trim i painted there's the yellow trim you painted the buttons yellow purple there i i added to it a little more each year way back in the aughts so uh it didn't start out with all this paint it started out with some of this paint i think i painted it over three years and i don't think i've had it out since then until this year i uh wore it on halloween to teach all right you guys have a good week out there